rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, my name is the Reverend Lukata Mjumbe. I'm the pastor of the Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church in Princeton, New Jersey, and welcome to our morning prayer. We gather every morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. to come together in the presence of the Lord, to come together in fellowship with our sisters and brothers, to come together because we believe that prayer lives matter. We believe that the prayers of the righteous accomplish much. We believe that when two or more of us are gathered together in the name of the Lord, that God is with us and that all that we ask for we can be in receipt of. We believe that prayers not only change external circumstances and situations, that prayers not only have an impact on people and persons beyond our physical reach, but we believe that when we pray that we are changed, that we are transformed, that we are made anew. And I welcome you. I welcome all of you who are joining us on Zoom, all of you who are joining us on Facebook live stream, those who are joining over YouTube, those who are watching on our website either this morning live or who will be watching later. We serve a God that is above time and beyond time, before and after time, and within time. And so whatever time you are watching, you can know that you are connected to the Most High God. Wednesday, uh, which the world calls Hump Day, uh, we have declared Testimony Day, a day when we can share what the Lord has done, what the Lord is doing, when we can share with the congregation the things that we have gone through and what the the Lord is bringing us to a testimony as a form of encouragement, as a form of inspiration, uh, even as a form of acknowledgement and confession that we sometimes need to let other people know that church people are not always perfect, that church people have wounds, that church people go through things, that 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 thing that you oftentimes hear in church uh, that that church people sometimes say is a lie. I'm too. Too blessed to be stressed. Stop lying. Too blessed to be stressed is a lie. Uh, it's a lie in a couple of different ways. One, everybody goes through stress. Everybody has issues. Everybody has challenges. Uh, he or she uh, who says that they are without sin deceive themselves, and the truth is not in them, for we all fall short of the glory of God. So that's the first way it's a lie. The other, the other way it's a lie is if you are truly blessed, if you are truly blessed and highly favored, if you are truly operating under the anointing of the Lord, if you are truly fire baptized and holy, 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 you can be sure that you are on the devil's radar screen. If God is doing something through you and to you and with you and is using you and blessing you to be a blessing to others, then you are on the devil's radar screen and you become the enemy of the state of evil. You become a target. You know, if, if God isn't doing anything with you, if God isn't blessing you, if, if God's hand isn't upon you, the devil ain't worried about you. Uh, the, 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 the devil doesn't need to do anything with you because all of your evil and all of your wickedness is going to come out of you anyway. That's what scripture says. And so uh, it is It is precisely that moment when you are being especially blessed. It is precisely that moment when things are going wonderful for you and great for you and you are being led through the, 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 the valley of the shadow of death and, and, and you are being covered and protected and there's a hedge of protection around you, mind, body, and spirit. It is in those moments when the enemy is horrified. Because God is being glorified. It is precisely in those moments when you are uh, feeling as if you are completely sheltered, and you may be completely sheltered, that the enemy is, 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 is wanting to, as Jesus said to the disciples, to cut through you, to sift through you like grain. So testimonies can help other people to know that even though I'm, I'm, I'm an elder, that even though I'm a deacon, that even though I'm a pastor, that even though I'm a churchgoer, that even though I may uh, look good on the outside, maybe it's Maybelline. It's not because I haven't gone through anything. It's not because I'm not going through anything. And testimonies can help other people know that 
you have your own wounds. I'm reminded in that passage of scripture after the resurrection when Jesus says, you know, touch the touch the holes in my hand. Uh, feel the feel the wound and the and the hole in my side. Uh, and it served as a testimony to let people who did not believe, who, who, who could not imagine that he had been resurrected from the dead and it was the same one who had gone through what he went through publicly on the cross that was now standing before them resurrected. So testimonies can, can help us to know what we've gone through. I want to I wanna read um, just one passage of scripture. Let's just do one. Uh, from the 22nd Psalm, the 22nd verse. Psalm 22 and 22. And it says, I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. I will tell of your name to my brothers and my sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. That we need to tell of the name of the Lord. We need to tell what it is that God is doing. And there's different ways to do that. Some people testify through Facebook posts. Some people testify through their through their tweets or their Instagram stories. Some people uh, testify uh, in in church on Sunday morning. It's uh, been a tradition, a part of many of the churches that I've been in, that that people have have been given times, whether it be at the in the middle sometimes or at the end of service, to stand up and to say, "Oh, let me tell you what the Lord brought me through." Sometimes people will share a song. Sometimes uh, people will just move into a moan or a groan. And so that you know that in words without speaking, that God is working on them, that God has brought them through something, that God has brought them to something. And I remember some of those testimonies. I remember some of those moans and groans better than I remember the sermon that was preached that day. Better than I remember the song that was sung by the choir, I remember the song, uh, the songs of joy, the songs of praise, the songs of the name of the Lord that was shared by that sister or that brother um, on that Sunday morning. But others share it on Wednesday. And uh, we don't have the opportunity to come together the way that we used to come together when we were all gathered together in the sanctuary. We are in that season now seemingly described by the prophet Habakkuk in our uh, sermon on this past Sunday from from the prophet Habakkuk uh, chapter 3 verses 17 and 18 where he he described the the, the time and the season when there was no figs uh, on the vine that the that the olives had not borne fruit there was no uh, harvest uh, to be reaped and then he says that uh, that the that the flock had been separated from the fold, the sheep had been separated from the fold. That, and we're in that, and there, and there were no herds in the stalls. You know, we are seemingly in that season uh, when we are uh, separated, uh, where we are unable to gather the way we used to. We are unable to bear the same kind of fruit that we were used to bearing, and that's not just uh, at Witherspoon Street. That's in in, in communities and in churches and in masjids and in synagogues and, and in temples all around uh, the, the, the country and even all around the world. But if you continue on to verse 18, the prophet says, yet um, he still gives praise. He still exalts the holy name of God because he knows that God is in it, that God will never leave us and God will never forsake us, though we can be separated from one another. Though we can be sequestered in quarantine, that God continues to be with us. We've come this far by faith. With this full street, 180 years. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. And he's never left us yet. And God will never leave us. And God will never forsake us even to the end of the age. And so I want to encourage this morning that you have a testimony to share, if you have a praise report 
to share, if you have an answered prayer that you can share, or if you have a prayer that you're praying. And again, you know, it's it's not simply, I, I want to say it's on, on this day of testimony, it's not simply a prayer request. Um I, I encourage you that that as you as as you as you share on this day, like if you say, well, you know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm having trouble with my my back, uh, and 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 I need prayer. That's appropriate. It's appropriate to share that. But but uh, but uh, but on a day of testimony, it's I'm having trouble with my back, and 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 you only and testimonies need to be the truth. Don't make it up to sound good. If you if you if you if you don't have a testimony yet that you can articulate, you know maybe you 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 groan and moan, or maybe you just stay silent. But I'm having trouble with my back, and I and I know the Lord is working on me. I'm 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 I'm, I'm taking my medicine. I'm 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 doing the exercises the doctor has told me to do. But as I do it, I do it with confidence and hope, and I ask that you continue to pray with me to be encouraged, because I know that God does not want pain and suffering for me, that, that, that God wants uh, good things for me, that all things work for the good for those who love the Lord and are called according to this purpose, and I do not believe that this is going to last forever, and I know that, the, that, that, that in my weakness... The power of God is made perfect. And so that's what a prayer request, at least in my experience, in my tradition, looks like even on, on, on a, in a time and a season of testimony. Um, and, 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 and those kinds of prayers sound different. I mean, you, 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 you must know, and I know that we, 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 ha we have some amazing men and women of God who are on this call. We have... We have uh, of retired ministers, we have elders, we have deacons, we have we have lay people, we have people who are who are who are biblical scholars. We have, we have, we have all kinds of different people who are on Zoom and are listening. And I know that you have people who come to you and ask you, you know, can you can you can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? And it's a blessing and a privilege to have people to want you to pray for them and with them. But it's a different kind of prayer when you know that you're already adding your prayers to their testimony. That they have already started the process of prayer. It's not a transactional sort of thing where they're placing their order at the drive through window and expecting to get a, a, a result by the, by the time they, 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 they get to the, the, the end of the line. It's that they are already praying with confidence and hope that they are loved by God and that God will make a way when for them it may seem as if there, no, there is no way. So this morning, I invite you to unmute yourself. I'm going to try to get on one of the places that we're broadcasting on, on Facebook and see if there are others. Maybe Aya, if you can help me out and see if you can... Uh, track on the Witherspoon Street uh, page. I'm going to, well, I think I'm on the Witherspoon Street page. Uh, maybe on my page or on YouTube uh, to see if we have any um, um, testimonies. I, I welcome Karen Yvette Jones, beloved sister, and, and Joanne Cunningham, who are watching with us on Facebook. Uh, and encourage you, if you have uh, testimonies that you'd like to share in the comment box, Please do that, and also on Zoom here, if you want to share them in the chat box. I, you know, I I just want to let people know because um, I realize as I go back and I watch that if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you might think there's only three of us on here. Uh, <laughs> you see, you see Sharon's beautiful face. You see Dave McAlpin because those are the images, the pictures. But it's more of us. You hear that beautiful laugh? That's not Sharon, and that's not, um, that's Rebecca. And so th th there are many other uh, people who are who are joining here, and I look forward to hearing your voices and hearing your testimonies this morning. Let's open it up for, uh, let, let me say a prayer over our testimonies first. Lord God, give us testimony, dear Lord. 
Give us the ability to speak of your name amidst the holy congregation. Give us the ability to, 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 to give shouts of praise, of, of joy, to give shouts of even pain and struggle, but with confidence, dear Lord, knowing that you love us, knowing that you're with us, knowing that you're guiding us, knowing that you're leading us, knowing that you haven't left us, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray this morning, we had, we had hoped that uh, our, our, our sister, uh, Lisette Gonzalez Sosa, who is recovering from this this terrible virus, dear Lord, would be able to lead uh, in this in this testimony this morning, dear Lord, and she may join us at some point along the way, dear Lord. But I I, I said to her when I c communicated with her last night, dear Lord, that her mere presence uh, would be a testimony, dear Lord, because God has brought her through. God is bringing her daughters through. God is 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 healing. God is restoring. God is making a way for her, dear Lord. And so we, we, we pray for her this morning, dear Lord. We, we pray for her strength. We pray for her health. We pray for her recovery. We pray for her, her beautiful voice, dear Lord. And we, and we pray that you continue to lay your hand upon the Sosa household, dear Lord, and that you continue to make a way through and to. Thank you for our testimonies, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together and say together. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Do we have any testimonies this morning? Reverend, I'll, I'll start. Good morning, everyone. So um, I'm just really grateful to be able to put my mind in the direction to um, use prayer and testimony and all the things that we do sent on uh, the, <clears throat> on weekday mornings to look at my life and, and to consider my relationship with God. It is my most fervent desire to be in right relationship with God and with the people God put in my life. And to understand how it is that I can live into what God wants me to do with this life that I've been given. So a couple of weeks ago, I shared about a decision that I needed to make um, about taking on a leadership position in the presbytery. And I um, decided a few days after that, you know, uh, it came to me um, you know, and you know, I just had this moment of clarity that that was not something that I need to do. That would be the right thing for me to do at this time in my life. I have made a plan to um, um, to to declutter my life, not just of the physical things in my apartment but to of a lot of activity and to know that what I'm doing is um, what I should be doing and, and in response to what God wants me to do with my life. And not just because it's something I see that needs to be done or because somebody has asked me to do it. I'm going to put my earphones in here so, because um, my voice is still not as strong from all the activity that I committed to do. <laughs> and because uh, I don't think God wants me to be exhausted all the time. I, I think God wants me to be clear in my mind and my thinking and my uh, uh, daily doing and, and wants me to be healthy, wants me to take care of myself. And that means I need to live, I need to allow more time for those things. So this morning uh, when I, struggled again to get to get up but committed to do it um and i was not thinking i had a testimony so ah, I don't know. <laughs> what what is my testimony so thank you pastor for actually you know challenging providing this challenge to think about what i have to praise god for i mean it's it, life we should not be taken grant for granted and um so thinking about testimony is a way to not take life for granted so anyway i have this um this little 
thing that the deacon, when I was a deacon, um, it, it has a scripture on it for every day of the year. So I leave it on my desk and I don't always look at it, but this morning I flipped over to today's date and it is, is a reading from Psalm 143 verse eight. And it says, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul." And that is exactly where I am in this season in my life, at this time these in my life. And so I know that God um, still has a plan for me, has intention for me, has work for me to do, to, further God's kingdom. And I know that that's what I want my life to be about. I just don't have the clarity yet about what it looks like. You know, what, what is the action? What, what is, how am I to use my energy, Lord? How am I to use the mind that you have given me? How am I to use the people uh, and the relationships that I have to accomplish that? This is what I'm praying for. And this is what I know that if I keep putting my attention there, it will be made clear. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your testimony, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Other testimonies? I have a testimony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So I love this because I came from a faith tradition <laughs> and in the home church that we believe the testimony service and um, <laughs> um, I grew up Pentecostal holiness. Mm. So we loved our testimony services. Mm. And um, this morning I just went to the mailbox and I got a card from my deacon. So <laughs> I am so blessed. My mother was a deaconess in her church in our church all growing up and my mother loved Christmas um, and she had a bittersweet relationship with Christmas. My great grandmother was born on Christmas day and so was my grandmother, mm. but my grandfather passed away um, five years before I was born on Christmas day. And so my mother, I, I didn't even know this until later on in life, there was always this heaviness, but she did all she could to make Christmas um, great for us. And so this Christmas, I feel so blessed because I have a church and due to my obedience, because I, I know I testified before about asking God for a, a job. And he said, I have a job for you to do. And it's at Witherspoon. Um, from that, a conversation came up between me and Pastor Lucada and a job opportunity came. I have an interview on Monday. I'm already claiming that. I don't know how, who else could do the job. <laughs> I know this is my job. It's community yeah. outreach coordinator for the municipality of Princeton. Yeah. And many of you, you know, men know my story. And as you get to know me more, you'll know more of, of my journey. Um, I don't know who else could do this with the passion that I have. Um, I'm at Witherspoon because I'm all about social justice and connecting that to a theology of a God who is lovely, loving and amazing and gracious and merciful. And I'm just so excited about um, Christmas this year. And I haven't been for a long time. My mother passed three years ago and I didn't celebrate Christmas. And, and listening to um, the prayers here, it, I realized that I myself took Christ out of Christmas. I made it about all these other milestones and all of these other dates and the people in my life, and you know, um, my, I mean, I even married a man. His name was Christmas. Joy's name is Joy Christmas. <laughs> so this being here and pastor talking about joy, I didn't realize because I tell joy all the time. Don't let anything or anyone steal your joy, not even me. But I didn't realize that I had allowed that to happen to me. So I just thank God because I understand more than anything now at this point in my life that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm. And I feel strong in my faith today and I'm so blessed by these prayers. Joy wakes me up. <laughs> like if I don't get up, she's like, mom, mom, get up. <laughs> you missed your prayers because I know that she sees a difference mm. in the way that I move and, and the way that I am throughout the day. And when I miss these calls, there is something to miss 
throughout my day. So I am so blessed that today, um, of, out of all the gifts that, that we may receive this Christmas, it, it was for me, this card to let me know that I have a deacon and I have a church home and I'm so blessed by it. Amen. And I praise Amen. God for that. Amen. Talitha Kumi. Amen. I want to uh, give a testimony to uh, Reverend Lucada and to the ministry of Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church. Um, I also want to uh, affirm and pray for uh, Sharon and her uh, calling to be your sister. Um, I am concerned about uh, the ministry of uh, Robeson House and uh, solicit prayers of all of you for the, the witnesses who participate and support Robeson House and for the partnership between Witherspoon Church and Robeson House. Uh, I pray that all together we will be a meaningful ministry to Jesus Christ. And I pray for Christ to give me strength and encouragement. Amen. Amen. Those who, who aren't, aren't aware and may be watching um, on Facebook or even though on, those on Zoom that uh, Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church uh, owns the, the home uh, where where the amazing activist and advocate and scholar and entertainer uh, artist uh, Paul Robeson was born. And Paul Robeson was born into our church. His father, William Drew Robeson, uh, was the, is, is to this day the longest serving pastor that ever served at Witherspoon Street Presbyterian Church. He served from 1880 to 1901, and, and Paul was born uh, in, that, in that home in 1898, I believe, Shirley. Am I right? 1898, uh, and in April of 1898. And um, there's been a long journey to, to make sure that we kept uh, that, that property and memorialized it and used it as a source of advocacy and that which continued the legacy, not only of Paul, but of William Drew Robeson and all of those who were a part of that house. That, that, I mean, there's so much history uh, in that house. And, and so we have a continuing struggle today to raise money and resources and support so that we can restore it and we can transform it into a, a place right at the front <clears throat> of the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood, a historic African-American neighborhood uh, in, in Princeton where our church has been for 180 years since we were dismissed from the what was then called the First Presbyterian Church of Princeton back in March of 1836. And so Reverend McAlpin and Shirley Satterfield and uh, Ben Colbert and, 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 and Denise Leslie and uh, and, and others who love this legacy and are concerned about the future have been coming together for years. Uh, and so uh, we, 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 we are coming together and we are in a difficult season. And so I add my prayers to yours, Reverend McAlpin, and, um, and for, for the Robeson House Board of Directors and for Witherspoon Street uh, Presbyterian Church and for all of those in community, because this is something which is important not just for our church, but it's important for not even all of Princeton. It's really important for the world. Paul Robeson was someone who transformed the world. Uh, William Drew Robeson, whether people realize it or not, someone who transformed the world. That house in so many ways, if you look at people who came through it, people who were connected with it, people who were impacted by it, um, were, were forever changed. <laughs> Praise God. In advance, because God's going to do it. God's already done it. Uh, it's already happened. The, the, the eschatology has been realized. 
and we're just on this linear timeline as human beings in our own scene. We haven't been able to see it yet, but the victory has already been won. Uh, and, and, and so we, we do not need to be stressed about some things if we have confidence and hope and trust in the Lord. Other testimonies, other testimonies that folks would like to share this morning. Thank you for those words. Good morning, everyone. Thank I'd you. like to, give, yes, I'd like to give a testimony that yesterday was the end of another semester. So I finished another semester and this morning at 2.30, I finished my last paper. So I give right. God praise. And here you are at 7 a.m. on this prayer call. <laughs> <laughs> so I give God praise. It was a tough semester because I, we moved. My my girl, my daughters moved out, and then my husband and I moved to a smaller um, apartment. And so there was a transition, and couldn't find things. So it was a real struggle this semester, but I made it through. So I give God praise for that. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God for completion. Uh, praise God for, for strength and transition uh, and, and for the greatness that's yet to come. Uh, give thanks for you, Kim. Kim has joined, joined us recently and, and thankful for you and for ho hopefully you are, you are recovering from your, from your regular sick, <laughs> your non-COVID-19 sick. Yes. Your, you and your husband and and, and, and your daughter also remaining healthy and strong in the season. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Are there other testimonies that, that people would like to share with us this morning? Other testimonies? I would like to affirm my appreciation for American institutions and thank God that uh, this nation, despite all its flaws and shortcomings, maintains high aspirations, and that despite the risk that we have faced, a huge risk of a, a, a coup d'etat, an overtaking of the American government, government. by uh, unscrupulous, power-grabbing people, that somehow our institutions, the judicial system, uh, the courts, uh, the people who actually counted votes, the people who pledged their faith to a particular candidate, that at every step of the way, democracy and justice and fair play prevailed. I think that is one of the most extraordinary things I don't think this could have happened in many other parts of the world. And I hope that we are very, very, very appreciative of the institutions that we have, which we, by the way, inherited mostly from white men. They didn't do it on purpose. I mean, being white, but also from the sacrifice of so many people, indigenous people, African-American people, immigrants, etc. And so today I give God thanks that all this complicated assemblage has brought us to this moment. And we can say in a very large country as this one, democracy has endured. Thank you. Amen. We give, we give thanks for uh, that, that, that legacy. We prayed earlier this week for, for Ghana and other countries that are going through elections uh, and, and prayed for the, their, their peaceful transitions. I'll add a prayer on that for my brother, my, my friend, um, uh, and my, my former classmate in Morehouse College, Reverend Raphael Warnock, who is uh, in one of the candidates in the runoff in the state of Georgia. Um, you know, for the, there's two, the, both Senate seats in, in, in Georgia are still uh, coming up and the early voting has already started in Georgia. So if there's any who are listening in the state of Georgia, you know, please, if you are able uh, to, to get out there and vote and vote early, 
uh, Reverend Raphael Warnock is the is the pastor of, of uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia, the church that Dr. King uh, pastored in Atlanta. Uh, he is a, an amazing scholar and an activist and a, and a pastor and, um, and and I just lift I lift him up, you know, and, and I don't do political endorsements, you know, because uh, I don't endorse the political system, period. You know, you never have to worry about me endorsing a, uh, in violation of the, the, the whatever laws there are about 501c3s. But I pray for my brother uh, and pray for his family, uh, his wife and his children and, and, for, uh, and for Georgia uh, and for that state, the state that I, that I lived in for 11 years. So, um, and, and, and hope to see more testimonies to democracy working. I see Karen Jones has joined us. She's made the transition from Facebook to Zoom. So we wel we, we welcome you. And I don't know if you did that because you have a testimony or maybe even a song you want to sing for us this morning. Let me make sure we let me ask you to unmute yourself because you're muted right now. Right. Okay. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And I have a song in my heart. I woke up this morning, put my foot feet on the floor. I started walking regardless of all the aches and pains, but I'm I'm still here. Amen. I'm Amen. still here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I have joy, 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 joy deep down in my soul. So, oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. Twelve gates to the city, hallelujah. There's twelve gates to the city. I love that song. I learned that song years ago. But it's in my spirit right now, and I wanted to sing that for you all, just a short snippet of it. I wish you all very well and have a blessed day, a very blessed day. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy this day. It's a glorious one. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your, thank you for your voice. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, I, I, I said it earlier that song has, as in the tradition that I've come, I, people will be may be surprised. Yes, I'm a Presbyterian pastor, but I received my call to ministry uh, at at at. Uh, a Pentecostal church, a non-denominational Pentecostal church in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Morning Star uh, International Fellowship, and um, was slain in the Holy Spirit, laying on my back when I received my call to ministry, and uh, and, and have seen those testimonies there, but um, throughout Alabama, where I spent my first two years of preaching before I ever preached for the first time in a Presbyterian church, I mostly preached in Pentecostal and Baptist churches, and hour of, of testimony services was something that everyone always looked forward to. And the songs that we heard um, were, 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 were the songs that are stay in my spirit and stay in my memory. Other testimonies, other testimonies anyone else would like to share? I also remember from my experience that them testimony services can go long because <laughs> We got we got caught up and we forgot how long. And I'm looking at the clock. It's 7:40. Is there another test? I don't want to cut anybody off though. That has something percolating and brewing that they wanted to they wanted to share this morning. Any other testimonies? I don't. I didn't see any that came in over uh, over Facebook. And I've been trying to bounce back and forth between the pages. Um, I would like to uh, give a testimony. I want to thank all who kept Tony Lamb in prayer. She's getting better. She's at her sister's house. Um, I want to also uplift um, Norma Wilson, who I haven't heard from for a while, but I know she's in my heart and I know she's doing well, to Joanne Cunningham, who I hadn't heard from for a long time. And I called her and um, she's not doing well. She's in pain. So I'd like you to keep her in prayer and uplift her today. Mm. Um, and I also, I was going through um, McCaffrey's yesterday through the line and the person who was a checkout person said, 
hi, Miss Satterfield. I said, hi, how you doing today? She said, I know somebody you know. And I said, who? She said, Karen Jones. I said, yeah, Karen Jones and I became friends over the telephone talking about uh, Griggs Farm. And she, I can't remember her name, but she's a cashier at the McCaffrey's. And um, she spoke very highly of Karen and so did I. And I'm glad to have another friend through history. And also I said, do you know TK? She lives there also. She said, no, I said, we well, have to meet TK. So I have two friends in Griggs Farm um, all through the history and I'm blessed. And I thank you all today. I'm on my way to get an X-ray. So have a blessed day. Amen. So Shirley, we lift it up as you are on your way to get your X-ray. We we also, uh, I believe I saw Joanne Cunningham, who was on Facebook, uh, not earlier. So we're keeping her lifted up in prayer. Yes. Uh, and Norma Wilson, who frequently joins us on Facebook. I don't know that I've seen her in a minute either. So Norma, if you're listening, uh, we love you and we are, we are praying for you. And we know that God will bring with you and Joanne and Lamb, bring, bringing you all through. Um, and and for for our new family who, who are in in here in Princeton and Greg's Farm, for Karen and, and TK, Tim, Tim Regan and his family and the phenomenal job. I want to give testimony to the great work, Shirley, that you did with uh, with with Juniper, with Junie, and, and her leadership of our Youth Sunday service. Thank you uh, on this on this past Sunday and. Just give thanks for their family, uh, Junie and, and Maple. Uh, and then to have Cedar there also was great for the lighting of our Advent candle. Yes. Give give give, give thanks. And um, if, if there's no other testimonies, I'll just say very quickly, and, I, and, I'll, and I'll testify. Thank you all. Be blessed today. Be blessed. In your, and, and as you move forward in your day, my, my daughter, Aya, and I um, have been... Um, fasting together uh, for Advent. Um, we are on day 18, uh, uh, day 18 without, um, without, any, um, without any food and uh, without any physical food, but we are being nourished in the spirit. We are being nourished with the fruits of the spirit. Uh, we are you know, just, doing, just doing water and uh, juice occasionally and um, I've been a couple of days now with just water only, um, and uh, but I'm feeling good, feeling strong, um, feeling healthy, feeling focused. I don't know if Aya would. Aya says I'm torturing her, <laughs> and making her uh, do this, but uh, I see her uh, getting strong, getting um, focused. She's been able to work. Uh, and and to and her new job every day and uh, is seems energized and doing her work and I'm just thankful that uh, truly uh, Advent is being transformed. The season of Advent is the season of the coming. When we look forward to the coming of Christ, and so we are not only consciously and spiritually looking forward to the coming of Christ, we're also looking forward to when we get to eat. <laughs> so we are going to get to eat uh, on Christmas Eve. Uh, the evening of Christmas Eve, uh, and are excited uh, about what God is doing as we empty ourselves out, and that we are being filled up with the Spirit. And so that's my prayer. There's somebody who joined us on the iPhone, and don't know who that is, but we welcome you also. Um, and 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 let's let's pray together. Dear Lord, thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the testimonies of jobs that we are going to see revealed, dear Lord, and, and, and opportunities that are, gonna, that are going to be made manifest. Thank you for successful medical treatments and healings and recoveries and restorations, dear Lord. Thank you for, for democracy at work, dear Lord. Thank you for completion, dear Lord. Thank you for for transition, dear Lord. Thank you for the for the for the opportunity for us to to come together in prayer with each other, dear Lord. Thank you for for what you're doing in the city. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the town. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We are blessed, dear Lord. We thank you for the voices, dear Lord. We thank you for the struggle, dear Lord. We thank you for what you brought us through, what you're bringing us to, dear Lord. You are an awesome and a mighty God, and you are worthy to be praised. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Thank you 
for 180 years. Thank you for what you're doing and what you've already done with Robes and House. Thank you for being a God that loves us more than we love ourselves. Thank you, dear Lord, for, for these prayer calls. Thank you for being able to reflect and meditate on, on what it is that you have planned for our lives and how you are decluttering and how you are emptying out and, and how you are helping us to make space for more of you because more of you is more a blessing. More of you is more of hope. More of you is more of, of, of peace and of joy, dear Lord. More of you is more of love, dear Lord. Open us up for love. Get us and give us our tickets for the love train, dear Lord. Let us all aboard gather together, dear Lord, so you can take us through and love, dear Lord. Love does not fail. Love will not fail. And dear Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for loving the people on this call. Thank you for Norma. Thank you for loving Joanne. Thank you for loving Karen. Thank you for loving Sharon. Thank you for loving my mother and my sister. Thank you for loving Rebecca and Reverend McAlpin. Thank you for loving Barbara and for hearing all of her prayers on her prayer list that I know that she has. Thank you for, for loving Aya and bringing her through this fast. Thank you for loving Kim and her husband and daughter. Thank you for loving TK, TKO. Thank you for loving Patricia. Thank you for loving the the, the, the anonymous person on the iPhone too, dear Lord. Thank you for all of those who are watching. I see my, my, my brother Eric McLaughlin has been watching. I see that my, my brother Alan Orr has been watching. I see that there are that there are sisters and brothers that are that are not on our within our physical reach, dear Lord, but are connected to us right now. Thank you for the healing that you're bringing about for Lisette, dear Lord. Thank you as we move toward the celebration of the birth of the Christ child, dear Lord. Thank you for this season of waiting, of wanting, of longing, of searching. Thank you for the season of the coming, dear Lord. Thank you for being God. Thank you for testimonies. Thank you for allowing us to speak of your name to the congregation. We will continue to give praise without ceasing. Love the Lord who heard our cry and pitied every groan as long as I live, as long as we have breath, we will pray, we will pray, we will pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray together and all say together, amen. 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 That's Hinda. Oh, it's Hinda. <laughs> Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. What a lovely surprise. Happy Monica, God bless you. Yes. Good to see Happy you. Good thank you, thank you. I was hiding. Oh, <laughs> You've been doing a whole lot of hiding during the hidden Christmas, hidden hope, joy, peace, love. Amen. Good to see you. God bless you. Nice. God bless nice. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bless all everyone. All. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, everyone. Blessings, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.